Welcome back everybody, this is Luis, back with another video on the channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you how you can use Django to send emails. We're going to be using Google SMTP server to send an email. So here I'm at the documentation for sending email using Django. Few things that are not covered here, which I would like to show you my code and my way of implementing this send mail function which you need to import from django.core.mail and I give you a complete walkthrough how you can use a front-end project to send an email from your back-end project. So here is my Angular project. Here I have a view, so I'm just going to open the view actually. So this is the project. Uh, I'm going to go to the home page where I have one input field with one button called getting started. And I'm going to try sending an email to a temporary email. So let's go and get one temporary email by using temp-mail.org website. Now here it's going to give you a temporary email, guys. You don't have to use your own personal one. So I'm just going to copy this and I will go back to my clocking project. And I'm just going to send that to the backend to send an email to this uh, email. So I'm going to click on get started here. I have some breakpoints, which I'm going to let it go first. And just to show you guys that the email get shipped. Uh, yep, it was successfully sent. So I'm going to open the project and there was an error. It's just the front end code that has to be fixed. So here we got one email and I'm going to be showing you how you can set up this using Angular and Django. So let's talk about the Angular first. In Angular, I'm using this HTTP service, which basically using this HTTP client to send our CRUD operation. So we got some enums going on in our uh, API method. So here I have defined API method, get, post, put, delete. I've got some endpoints going on here. It goes into constant file. Uh, for my HTTP service, here is a request call function. You are more than welcome to pause the video and then write this code. I'll write this code for you guys in the description or probably give a link to the blog. But I'm going to, you know, write this complete tutorial in a text form as well. So here's a request call function. I'm using that request call function in my home component.ts file. I have a form which I get the value from. We create two constants, code and payload. So code will basically have like, you know, six digit random number. So let me explain to you this functionality. So what I'm trying to achieve here is let's say a user wants to sign up for my web application. Now, I don't want this user to just type in a random email address, which doesn't exist and then he just uses my system for two days and never come back. And I don't have that proper email, so I cannot target, uh, I cannot, you know, do a marketing to that user. So what a, what a lot of website or web application or companies do nowadays, they make sure that the email is valid and the guy validates email by verifying with the code, which gets sent to their email. So here I'm going to send this random generated code and also I'm going to save that into a local storage or in the back end. Now, next time when the user, you know, try to sign up. So here, once this email gets sent, it's going to navigate to its, uh, you know, code verification page. User has to type that code verification and click on verify. And that's the only time they get to see a sign up form. So this way we basically make sure that the email is valid, user received the email and he typed the code in so we know email is valid. So that's the whole uh, point of view doing this functionality. So as you can see, we were able to send an email. So let's go back to the code here. I'm creating a payload of code, a message, subject and two email. Just to make sure uh, that email where you wanna you know send you need to put that into a list in terms of Python, or you can say array in JavaScript. Then we're using this request call function from my HTTP service, and I'm using this endpoint, verify email, a post method, and a payload, and I'm subscribing to the response. 
also we're logging that okay that's uh looks all right now in terms of django project the way we start you know building this uh sending email stuff first of all you're gonna have to go to your settings file when i click on settings file and all the way down here i have uh, done some configuration here so to send an email for now i'm using google smtp server for that you're gonna have to create a gmail account once you got that gmail account then you need to set this configuration so first of all email use tls set that to true email uh, underscore backend you need to type this string there uh so this is basically an app that you're saying hey this is the backend you're going to be using email host we say smtp.gmail.com we tap the password for our email so it can authenticate also uh, the host user which is going to be your email address a port for google you're going to be using 587 and also uh email host you, you need to set that the default email for sending so this is the email host user, so I'm just sending that as our default. So this is the configuration, guys, you need to do once you've done this configuration, your Django project is ready to use Google or Gmail SMTP server to send an email. Now, I'm going to show you the view here. I'm using function-based views with API underscore view decorator. I'm saying, hey, can you please accept the post request? Once we, you know, go inside the view function, we say request of method is equal to equal to four. We just double check that. And then we get the data from the send request and we pass into this send email function. Now I could use Django send mail function directly, but I like to encapsulate my functionality into one place. So if there is a problem with, you know, I'm basically I'm sending emails from you know for different purposes and I might have to do some configuration depending on what type of email i want to send that's why i would like to uh, encapsulate the functionality into one place so i know if there's a problem with sending email where is it and i could debug it easily so here i'm going to show you the send mail email function that i created let me just minimize this debugger here and also hide the project so we can see the whole function so basically we're expecting the data in an object and I'm taking out subject email to email and for the from email I'm accessing settings so you can access settings from django.conf import settings package and then you're just saying email host which is going to be the the email I've shown you in the settings I'm using an if statement saying hey can you make sure that there is something in a subject there's something in a message and the form email is there now this is the direct uh, Django function that I'm using. You have to import that from django.core.mail package and use uh, an import send mail. Now the reason why I'm putting that into try and expect a block is because I want to, you know, cache the error. If there is any, any kind of error, I want to cache that. So I'm using this function, passing in subject message from email and to email. Just to double, uh, you know, just to make sure that you guys know this two email has to be in a list or in the tuple. Uh, it cannot be a string because you could use like multiple emails here and you could send the same email to multiple emails at the same time by, you know, putting two emails in an array from your front end. Now, if everything goes okay. Uh, then it jumps to the create response function. The, the way I deal with responses in my backend code is avoiding this uh, Django REST framework response. So I'm just going to go to response file, and here I'm using this REST framework the response import response. Okay, so I avoid using it in a lots and lots of places. I like to put this response function into my own function so i know every response will go through via this create response function and if there is some sort of problem it's easier to debug and i know where to look if there is a problem or a bug so i create this create response function which takes uh which basically takes code message success redirect and then it creates a response object and then it just uses this django rest framework response 
and send data back and then send the code back. Now for the code, I've also created another function and I've used if the code is 200 or let's say if the success, then I'm going to send back this HTTP 200. Okay. Basically it translates to 200. Now this is how I deal with, uh, you know, structuring and, you know, making sure the code looks okay. It's readable and I put the, the function in the proper places. Okay. And it's reusable as well. So this same response function can be used throughout your application and you can just keep improving this. Now, this is what you need to do to send an email. I'm going to give you another demo. So let's just uh, go to temp email and I'm going to click on delete, which basically is going to delete this email and it's going to give me the new one. And this time it generates this email. Let's copy this and then I'm going to paste that here. Now let's just do a bit of debugging here. Let's just do if else. Also, when I'm creating a response, I would like to show you what gets created in the email. Let's just do a breakpoint here and then breakpoint here in the view. We can do another breakpoint. So, you know, we, we could see the data coming in from the front end. Uh, a couple of things in the front end. What you need to do is you need to set up your uh, HTTP call interceptor. That's very important that you might need a token for your API. Uh, you need to put that into your code or, you know, you can put that as a, in a header. So that's a separate thing in terms of how you can set up headers and how the HTTP works. But let's go and click on get started. It's going to do a breakpoint here. And now I can see the request method is set to post, which is good. So we can go to this send email function. I'm just going to click on this button to let it go. And then now I hear breakpoints. So as a subject, I'm seeing that I'm getting verify your email. A message is something your email verification code is this. And it's going from this email also to two email. I'm just going to hover over and you can see it's the email that we sent from the front end. Okay. Now I'm just going to let it go. And now it should break one here because it's going to send an email and we're going to have to go to the create response and it creates a response and then sends the response back in terms of front end. Let me just uh, turn on this developer tools and we want to clear this out and I'm logging that response there. So let this go and I'll let this go as well. Now there's an error here because you know, there's a, there's a code has to be fixed, but here we got an, uh, error saying HTTP failed response. So something happened here. It actually didn't really send an email just to verify. Yeah, actually it did send that, but the response was wrong. I might have to fix this code here because it's sending a 500. But anyway, you could see that we were able to send an email using this send mail function. And the way you configure it is by going to your settings.py file and you know, write this configuration, just create a Gmail account. You can use your own one as well. It's up to you. Okay. That's about it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you guys soon. And this is video is going to be part of the Django rest framework playlist. Make sure you check out the playlist. Okay. All right. Talk later.